So through the prestige, we actually learn about two men, Alfred Borden and Robert Angier, who begin working with each other under another magi magician. But one night during a performance, Borden ties a faulty knot, which actually results in the death of Robert Angier's wife. So not only does the show get canceled under this other magician, the two men are left to start performing on their own. But this creates a bitter rivalry between the men. They try to outdo each other to become the greatest magician. Um, and in doing that, they actually try to ruin each other's shows that the other doesn't become the greatest magician. Um, well, this actually progresses into the ultimate trick, the transporting man trick. And in order to achieve this, they actually need a clone. But leading up to that, um, they don't know how to achieve the trick, if that makes sense. Uh, so Borden is actually the first person to come up with the trick, and we don't know at the time that he actually has a twin or a body double. We don't find out until the very end. Um, so Robert Angier goes out trying to achieve the same trick and at first he uses a look-alike to accomplish the trick but Borden spoils it during one of his performances so that leads him to go to America to seek out Tesla, a man named Tesla, to create a machine that actually does the cloning for him. Um, so this ties into the philosophical debate of personal identity for class because Locke, well, the Locke theory actually relates to it the best. Um, Locke argues that a person is a thinking, intelligent being that has reason and reflection and consider itself as itself. The same thinking thing in different times and places. So we actually have to analyze the two men separately. Borden is actually has a twin that he uses to accomplish the magic trick. And like I said, we don't know it until the very end, but... Uh, Angier doesn't believe it at first because of the unique hand injury that he has. Um, so this actually relates to qualitative personal identity, um, just like the Olsen twins. Uh, there's a lot of like foreshadowing in the movie, like Alfred's wife actually catches on to the multiple personalities that Borden has. Um, and actually Fallon is his twin, so they share a life. They alternate who plays the actual Borden and who is Fallon. Uh, so one actually loves Sarah and one actually loves the assistant Olivia. And eventually their lives just become torn apart. Um, and under the insufficiency objection, the two men actually can't exist as the same same personal identity, just because they have different notions like love, so it it doesn't work. Now for Angier, um, while he does have the clone, the clone actually shares the identical mind, body, experience, and consciousness at the moment of the cloning. They, after that, they actually start experiencing different different memories and different experiences so they can no longer live the life as a, a single identity. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Um, what is actually fascinating is we don't know who the original Angier is. Um, when they actually are testing the machine on the hats and the cats, they had the cat leashed to the center of the machine, and once they turned on the machine, it looked like the cat stayed in that very position attached to the leash. So it was under my perception that that was the original identity. But when Angier stepped into the machine for the first time, it looked like the clone actually was in the machine, and then the original 
was outside of the machine, so the clone shot the original Angier. But we don't really know, and so every time that the machine is used, we don't know who the original Angier is and who the clone is. And also, when the trick is performed and one of them falls into the water tank down below, all memories cease to exist. So that just further proves that they can no longer share the same identity. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope by reading my paper it was a lot clearer. Sorry. And uh, thank you.